Where are your fingers? Use kids to commit your crimes. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. But now, I'm not. I know when and how you will die. <laughs> but I'm not allowed to tell you. Has the Large Hadron Collider destroyed the world yet? Dot com. That was Michael from the popular Vsauce YouTube channel. And that last clip where he said, has the Large Hadron Collider destroyed the world yet? Yeah, that is actually a real website built in response to valid concerns from people thinking that the Large Hadron Collider was gonna create an earth swallowing black hole. It's also the longest word ever spoken on the Vsauce YouTube channel. But how do I know that? Well, actually, using my brain, Hex, in the power of data science, I downloaded and analyzed every word ever spoken on the Vsauce YouTube channel to create an app that showcases the results at four levels of complexity. From simply finding the longest word in a body of text to the increasingly difficult task of building a Vsauce search engine. I'm gonna walk you through the implementation of each section and use Hex's app building capabilities to present the results in a digestible manner. Starting off with level one, what is the... Being one of the more simple tasks, I started thinking off, let's just look at each word and keep track of which one has the most letters, which is valid, but that's boring and I'm extra. So not only did I want the longest word, but also how many times it appears, leaving me with a function that goes like this. Given some text, remove all the punctuation and split it up into words. Then count how many times each word appears in the text and then put the longest words in the front and shortest words in the back. Hey, shout out to the short kings. This part right here tells us how many top words we want, like four, two, or maybe a hundred. Then we create a dictionary of word count pairs, resulting in a final dictionary that looks kind of like this. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but these aren't actual words. They are things that Vsauce said, but you probably won't find them in a dictionary. So I went back in the code and added a line to filter out any words that you wouldn't find in a standard dictionary before counting and sorting. And with that simple change, we have our final result. The longest real words are, uh, oh, are electroencephalogram, characteristically and disproportionately. And the longest words period are has the large hadron collider destroyed the world yet .com, and these two. Clicking on these links brings you to the spot in the video where Vsauce is actually saying these words. I say YOLO? Well, it's probably more accurate to say YOLO Blomo Matasos Batutapa Wiki Oboyadon Chioboytad. To satisfy all the nerds out there, let me speed run you through how I actually got these links. When I downloaded all the transcripts, I not only got the actual lines, but the timestamp for when each line started. A YouTube link is made up of the locator for the website, which is just youtube.com, and the resource to request a video, where after this V equals comes the video ID, and to start at a specific time, we can add this query parameter and the start time, giving us a full link that looks like this. I was also going to add the most common words that he's ever spoken, but they honestly weren't that interesting, so I'll just throw them up here on the screen. But you know what was interesting? The most Vsauce has tons of iconic lines like, Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Or is it? But of all these phrases, which ones are the most frequent? In data language, phrases are called engrams, and engrams are a way to break up a sequence of words into smaller chunks. The n in engram tells us the number of words that are grouped together in the sequence, where unigrams are grouped by single words, bigrams by doubles, and trigrams by triples. To find the most common engrams or phrases, I've written a function that goes like this. Given a string of text, remove the punctuation and split it up into words. Then create a list of engrams using the NLTK engram function, but notice how some of these pairs use the same word over and over. It's this overlap that can make some of the pairs seem more important than they really are, meaning we shouldn't return engrams that are close to each other. So after we convert them into a list of strings and count each engram, we'll loop through the most common engrams and keep track of the positions. We'll set a minimum distance of five so that once we use an engram at a specific position, the next engram we add to the list must be at least five steps away. If we start with the engram at position zero, the next engram we add to our list will be at position five. After this, there are no more indices left, so only two engrams are returned. And I also want to calculate the longest engrams, but the color is pretty similar with only one line that's different. As a result, the most common bigram phrases are of the, 
all right, and able to. Honestly, that's not that interesting, which is why I added an n-gram slider to see how these results change with different values of n. And if we look at the quadgrams, we can see that iconic intro that we all know and love. Building a search engine based off Vsauce videos was for sure, by far, one of the most challenging problems in this video. And it literally took me three hex projects to pull off. And like I said, I'm extra. So I didn't just build one search engine, but two of them that works in very different ways. The first search engine works by typing in a search word or phrase and then checking all the transcripts for that term. Honestly, this is very simple and this is literally all it takes to do this. Unlike the first search engine that's based on exact matches, the second search engine is based on a semantic representation of the text. But what the f does that mean? When we form sentences, the words we use to communicate can have multiple meanings depending on the context. That's why it's not hard for you to know that bark means two different things here. But unlike word-loving humans, computers much rather prefer numbers which means if we want to talk to a computer in our language, we need a way to translate words into meaningful numbers. Welcome to the world of word embeddings. A word embedding is a list of numbers that allows words with similar meanings to have similar representations, capturing the semantic relationships between words. To get my embeddings, I used a hugging face model called T5 and asked it to encode all my transcripts, which it was honestly <laughs> super happy to do for me. Then I set up a way for someone to type in a search query, which I sent to the model to get an embedding of the search term. Then using an algorithm called cosine similarity, I can find the top transcripts that are most similar to my search embedding, allowing me to search through Vsauce videos to look for concepts rather than exact matches in words. So in the app, I actually added both search engines to the same section. So we have the normal one right here and the semantic one down here. If we search for a query like, or is it, we can see that it appears in 29 videos and we can again click on this video and it should show us exactly where in the video this happens. Or is it? The organ we use to reason takes millions of years to evolve. And if we hit the shuffle button, we should get a new selection of videos to choose from right now and here. Let's just click on one of these again. Of 100, which is also the number of legs centipedes have. Or is it? So now in the semantic search engine, if I search for the concept of quantum physics, we can see that there are 14 videos related to this topic, such as, is the five second rule true? How many things are there and what is random? And we can even see some of the lines in videos where he's talking about something kind of related to quantum physics. So like for example, God played dice with the universe, which is like a very common thing in quantum quantumness. So let's even try something else like, I can't spell warranty wrong, but it's okay. All right, so there are 13 videos related to, we've been trying to contact you about your car's extended warranty where warranty is spelled wrong, but don't mind that. So let's see what we got in here. Uh, hey, Vin Diesel, hey, he drives cars. <laughs> so yeah, these two search engines are pretty fun. You can pretty much type in anything you want and explore the things that will come up from Vsauce's YouTube channel. And speaking of explore, I've actually built this last section as a way to explore videos on the Vsauce YouTube channel using a lot of the techniques that I've already shown. So for example, you can use this drop down to select a video or just hit shuffle if you don't like the current options. And you can see a bunch of stats like the longest word, common engrams, the most common engrams, the most common word, all sorts of cool things. There's even a section at the bottom that tells you which videos are most similar to the one that you just currently selected. And just under the related video section is a visual 3D representation of these videos in a 3D space. So what I was mentioning before about how computers only understand a list of numbers, this is a visual representation of how a computer will embed words into a numerical space. This purple one will always be the current video that you selected. And then these other dots are the distances between the current video you've selected and the related videos. Now, if you wanna play around with this app and explore it more yourself, I have left a link in the video description so go ahead and check that out now i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video if you have don't be shy of the comment bar man like the comment bar is your friend as am i but for now i will see you guys in the next one and as always thanks for watching peace